So in this class, we will start with the elements of a production control system. So in the previous class, we learn about what is the basics of the TPC and why TPC is very most important in the production system. So production planning and control. So you are also learn about what are the different types of productions are there. Similar that the job production, batch production, and mass production. So you also came to know that what are the characteristics of a different types of productions and what are the features of each productions and what is the feature or factors affecting the PPC also. So these are the topics which we covered in the last class. So in this class, we'll start with the elements of the production control system. Okay. So in the elements of production control system, the various elements of control production control are there. So first one is the control of materials, the control of planning, control of manufacturing capacity, control of tooling, control of quantity, control of activities, control of due date, control of material handling, control of information. So why the PPC is to be get taken? The first question is why the PPC is to be get considered? So the main PPC is considered is we are going to be controlling in each and every department regarding the planning, regarding the production and regarding the quality control. So that is the thing the PPC is to be get considered. So we are controlling means in the planning, how it is to be get designed before you want to start some production. So what are the different types of data to be get gathered? So that is the different views which we are going to be seeing in the planning. Next, to come to the production. What type of uh, production is to be get started? Whether it is related to only some uh, customers or it is related to whole customers. So whatever production you want to start. So in how many days it is to be get complete? So when you are going to be starting a production, how you are going to be utilizing the machines in your company? So this all come, uh, comes under the production. So controlling means you are going to be controlling the quality, quality inspection, quantity. So how it is going to be getting the output when you are going to be sent into the market. So how we are going to be reversing if it is getting a failure also. So these are the main key points which we learn under the PPC. So comes to the elements of the production control system. The first point is the control of a material. The control of the material. So the material it explains the how we are going to be controlling the materials. How we are going to be controlling the materials. So the first, uh, the key point under the control of material is you are not wasting the material. So whatever the material is to be get required for your total production, as per that basis only the material is to be get by. And how we are going to be supplying the material from one uh, production unit to another production unit. Means one machine to another machine. How the material is to be get loaded. So if the material is to be get by in a bulk quantity, how it is to be get stored? How it is to be get stored? Because all the materials cannot be get uh, outside the layer, outside the environment. It is to be stored by taking some of the measurements. So what are the different measurements are to be taken to control the properties of your material? So how we are going to be storing the material and how we are going to be supplying the material from one unit to another unit. And you are also come across for one machine, how much material can be loaded per day, per day and how much material can be used for your total production part. So that explains what is the control of the material. So next is control of the planning. So control of the planning means what is the sales? What is the sales and the production plan? So how we are going to be? See, uh, we will get some uh, control over the sales and the planning because we had started some prototype. But you will be having some idea that this prototype can be get success in the market or not. Can be get success in the market or not. So what is the forecast of your sales and what is the demand of your product? And what is the production planning? How it is to get planned? And what is the routing information from process engineer? So what is the routing information from step by step? So routing information is nothing but how the uh, path is to be get followed from one machine to another machine, whether it is loading or unloading, what is the procedure to be get followed? So that totally explains, uh, and it also known as, it also explains about what is the bill of material data which is used for a certain type of a product. So bill of materials is nothing but what is the data which is going to be consist of a certain product. Certain product. Take an example of a screw jack. It is having a different number of parts. Different number of parts. So each and every part explains about different type of quantity, different type of quality, and different type of measurements also. So we have going to be given a data in a clear way. 
regarding the certain product that is nothing but a bill of material okay so these three points these points explain about what is the control of the plant next the third one the control of the manufacturing capacity so control of the manufacturing capacity means the first point is uh, how much labor you are going to be having in your company what is the labor quantity you are going to be having in a company and what are the equipments you are going to be having in your company so for a certain number of equipment the labor are sufficient or not if you have brought a uh, equipment which is very uh, new technology which is having very new technology updated part but the labor who are there in your company whether those are updated or not whether those people can do work on that equipment or not so what is the control over the manufacturing capacity so each and every equipment how many pieces can be get produced so how many pieces can be produced for these many hours here yeah. so this totally complete uh, explains so it explains that what is the uh, total complete production total total complete production which is known as a control of manufacturing capacity next b control of tooling so control of tooling means you have to get controlled over your tooling part over your tooling kit so what are the number of tools are to be get used so whether the tools uh, that are related to your production those are available or if those are available how it is to get utilized how it is to get utilized if uh, you had started a new company but the tools are very uh, insufficient so the, those tools you have to be get used to get a good uh, good efficiency so how uh, what are the scale you are going to be taking for those tools so uh, how those tools are to be get used Uh, by taking good care of that one, so how it is to be? So whether the those tools are sufficient or more tools are to be get buy. So what is the things regarding the tools which are available in your company? Next, control of quantity. So control of quantity means this involves about the progress of your production. So progress of your production, what are the required quantities are processed at each step? At each step. See if you are going to be loaded some pieces on uh, the machine. So we have to know the output. How many pieces can we get out of that machine? How many pieces can we get manufactured from that machine? So we have to be uh, known in a certain manner at each and every hour on a certain machine. How many pieces are to be get produced? How many pieces are to be get produced? And it explains about the quantity. I am not talking about the quality. I am talking about the quantity for these many hours for these many type of equipment are using in your company. What are the number of pieces are to be get produced? Okay. Next, the control of activities. So control of activities means uh, it is the release of information or order at a defined time. So uh, what is the time you had assigned? What is the time you had assigned when you are, you are going to start your company today? When you are going to start your job today? What well, at what time you had taken the tool? So at uh, how much time it is going to be required to complete the part? So at what time? What is the excess time? So what is the part? So control over of your activities. Next, control of the due date. So it involves the checking the relation of the actual and planned schedule. So it is to be get controlled over a due date. So due date means so what is the actual schedule? What is the planned schedule? So actual schedule is if uh, we have to be given. the total production to the customer by the end of the month by the end of the month but we had planned our 20 days in a month see uh, if we want to give a production output to a customer in 30 days in 30 days but what we had planned is we had planned in such a way that the production to be get completed in 20 days in a 20 days you had taken a 10 days variance because if you are going to be getting any deviation over the product any failure over the product how it is to be get rectified how it is to be get rectified so what are the measures are to be get taken so how so that totally explains about what is the actual plan what is the planned schedule what is the actual date and what is the planned date so what is the due date okay so next uh, control of material handling so what is the what is meant by material handling material handling is nothing but a conveyor it is nothing but a conveyor which is used to transfer the materials or a product from one place to another place from one place to another place it is used to get travel so that is nothing but a material handling so different types of uh, conveyors are there belt conveyors rope conveyors 
any of the types of conveyors which you have learned in your IEM subject. So this material handling, how it is to be controlled? If the material handling the conveyor is used only for a certain product, or it can be uh, used for a multi product. It can be used for a multi product. See, if the conveyor system is having some robotic part, robotic arm, it can be hold any number of pieces from any of the edge, any of the edge. So what is the type of material handling system is used in your company? So control over it. Okay. Next, control of information. Control of information. So control. Whatever the deviations you got. Right. What is the production computer? So what is the failure you got? Not the failure. What is the excess you got? Whether it is hundred percent accurate or it is eighty percent, where you had get a fault, where you had get a fault. So how it is to be get required? How it is to be get rectified? So what is the total information regarding certain product? So why the information is to be get gathered is if in a future if the same product is to be get manufactured after five years, you can be get some information from this type of file. Right. If you are not in the same company, if some another ex person was there, he can be get understood. Okay, five years back this type of production was done. So these are the failures which I have got during the production. So that's why they had stopped, or else that's why they had used the, the another method. So this is nothing but whatever the information we are providing to the company for the further purpose, the future purpose. Okay. So this all explains about the elements of the production control system. It explains about the elements of a production control system. So first one is control of material, second control of the planning, third control of the manufacturing capacity, D control of the tooling, E control of the quantity, F control of activity, G control of the due date, H control of the design, control of the information. Okay. Next, so we will come to the production system. The second slide. So what is meant by production system? So by the name the production, what you understood, it is a conversion of the materials to a given form. Yes or not? It is a conversion of the material to a given output. So how it is to be get carried over? You are not directly converting the material, uh, directly converting the powder to a certain product. You have to be use some methods. So what are the methods are to be get used? So this is explained under the production system. So in a production system, you are having a different piece. You are having a different piece, which are utilized, which are involved to get the output in a certain manner. To get an output in a certain manner. The first one is resources. So can you see the diagram here? The first one is the resources. So through the resources, so what the resources are having in your company? The so men, machine, technology, finance, and a data. Men, machine, technology, finance, and a data. The resources. These are the resources. The main resources is men, machine, and money. The main resources. Three M's: men, machine, and money. So these are the very three important M's are to be get considered in any of the industry. Okay. So from these five uh, five resources, which are going to be taking any input, which are going to be taking as an input, and it is to get transformation process, any of the process, any of the matter regarding your production. So you are going to be getting an output. So what are the outputs in the what ways? It is in a goods, information, and a certain. It is in a goods, information, and a certain. See, when you are taking men, machine, technology, finance, and a data. Men, machine, technology, finance, and a data. So these are the five parts which are to be considered in an input. So when you are going to be having a transformation process, the first one you are getting as a goods, the second is an information, the third is a certain. So the goods are nothing but which are the projects which are manufactured by using some equipment, some process, some process equipment. So the information, see, when some rocket launching was there, so each and every scientist was very struggled nearly six months or seven months back to to launch a certain rocket. But after when the launching the rocket, something was happened. Something was happened. It was failed. It was failed. It is not successful. But due to failing, what we had got, we had got some information regarding the the process because why we had failed that, why it is not getting a success. So where the fault was, so whether regarding the material or regarding the assembly or regarding any services, 
which we have provided. So what is the thing was there then, right? So that is the income. Though you didn't got any success, though you didn't got any profit, but you have got a certain information, which we cannot do any fault in the future. Right. The first point is you had got some information, so that if any failure was there, it can be recovered in the future. Okay. Next, what is the service? So how if you had to design a product which is very having a good service in the market? So how what are type of services you are going to be doing in the market? Right. So the so these are the three outputs which you are going to be getting. So from the output, you can getting a feedback. You can be getting a feedback. So feedback is nothing but if the product is nice, okay, you will get a good feedback. If the product is bad, you will be getting bad feedback. So the company always must be ha uh, step on to uh, take the bad feedback as well as the good feedback. One is one one is the good feedback is when the customer is uh, happy. The bad feedback when the customer is sad. So in this way, we can be explained as producer risk and a consumer risk. In the first class, I had explained about this one. What is the producer risk and what is the consumer risk? Though the product is very nice, you can be get a failure. Okay. See, if the ten pieces are uh, taken, ten pieces are produced. So in the ten pieces, uh, it is uh, you are going to be checking the quality on a trial and error basis. So in that ten pieces, you had in a mindset that the ten pieces were very good, but in the ten pieces, you had taken only the two pieces. So by using the only two pieces, you are going to be judging the overall ten pieces. So what is the quality of those two pieces? What is the quality of those two pieces? If the quality of those two pieces are, if it is bad, so what you are going to be which who is affecting that one? The company is to get affected because. With the help of the two pieces, you are going to be judging overall ten pieces, right? So the company is going to be get lost because you are you are getting somewhat uh, you are putting somewhat low price to it, right? Think in a reverse manner. If those two pieces are good and overall the eight pieces are bad, overall eight pieces are bad. So the customer who is going to be receiving this one of the piece from these eight pieces, what the customer thinks? The price what you had put on it, it is very worthy. But what is the product you had got? It is not so good. So the customer is keen to file a complaint also regarding a company, so that we had put a certain amount on a certain product, but we didn't got a certain quantity or quality regarding. Right. So that comes this total comes under the feedback and a control. So feedback and control is totally depends on a post or next. So the custom, the company must be always ready to accept the feedback in both the manner, in both the manner. Okay, so that is the feedback and control. Next, so you can all see the in the diagram from the output, the feedback and the control you can get from the customer and as well as the production system also. So from the output, it can be going to the customer external, customer external. So and the response, what is the response after sales service? What is the response? Okay, you had introduced the product in the market. What is the response over it? Whether you got a good response or it is a bad response. What is the response over? It? So this total comes under the TQM concept. TQM is total quality management. So TQM is total quality management. So in TQM, if you want to get understand it, uh, you have to be seeing some of the great uh, standards on any of the food items. Like uh, I uh, like FSAI, FSAI uh, regarding a food item, and you can also observe on any of the industries that it is having the ISO 9001. Okay, these are nothing but standards regarding a certain function, regarding a certain function of your part. So FSAI it explains that our product is good as per our standard, as per the FSAI standard, the product is good. That's why only the hallmark was given for it. So thing, uh, see when you are taking a gold, so gold hallmark it is to be get putting on a gold. So when you have seen a hallmark, what you will think is okay, the gold is pure, right? The whatever the gold is to be get you want to buy, it is okay. We can worth it. It can be kept kept the money, right? So the total concept comes under the TQM concept, total quality management. Okay, so I will repeat it again. The first production system. 
so the production system always explains that you are transforming the materials into the some form some output form so the first thing is you are having the resources the resources are of type men machine technology and finance and tax men labor machine equipment technology what are the new methods finance investment data information so by using these five parts it is taken as an input so we are going to be transformation process you are getting an output output may be type one is the goods information and services so goods is if you are going to be manufacturing certain product you are going to be getting a some product there is an automatic goods information means if you had got some success or a failure but we got some information regarding certain method or certain process so that we cannot be get followed we may or may not be get followed in a future so services services means how you are going to be helping the customers in the market so what are the type of services we are providing in the market so these uh, different types of forms which comes under the output part so from the output we are going to be getting through words the customer the feedback and a kind and as well as we are going to be getting it is moving from the output to the customer external so from the customer external you are going to be getting a production system and again feedback and control and what is the response the response is after the same service okay so this is nothing but a production system so when is this question is going to get asked in your exam you have to be explaining each and every topic each and every heading which are there in the exam okay So the total concept is to be known under PQM concept. Okay. Next. So what is the classification? What is the classification of the production? What is the classification of the production? So by the name of the production system, we came across about the three types of production systems. One is the job production, batch production, and a mass production. So the classification of the production system here you are having a two types of production. One is the intermediate production system. The second one is a continuous production. So intermediate production system, as you had observed in the slide, it is just two types. One is the job shop production system. The second is a batch production system. And the second, the continuous production system, it is having two types. One is the mass production system, and the second one is a slow production system. intermediate as well as a continuous part next so what is the uh, definition of an intermediate so uh, the name of intermediate we can understand something that is the production is not a continuous the production is not a continuous it is only uh, at least quantity if we are going to be manufacturing a product for a certain design for a certain design for a certain quantity a limited quantity is known as an intermediate production A limited quantity, so it involves as interrupted flow. It involves as an interrupted flow of material through the plant. It is not a continuous part. It involves the interrupted flow of material through the plant. So in this production system, general purpose machines are used. General purpose machines are used. So it produces items different in nature and small quantity. It produces items with nature and in small quantity. so intermittent production is classified as job shop production system and batch production system so in the last class we already know came to know about what is a job shop production system and what is a batch production system so we will have again a look over it so what are characteristics of a job shop production system one is a small production run the second is the flow of the material and is manufacturing and fourth is the layout of the plant and equipment and is the space required and six is a situation so here the job production system is it is a small production run so the flow of material is very less so the manufacturing full time is to be taken so depends on the design and the product so what is the layout of the plant what is the equipment what is the skills required what is the quality of it one of the intermediate production system so it explains the both characteristics of one investment planning of lay of production plant layout material hand and the production schedule so these are the different characteristics the short the thing 
we had uh, type of investment we are the planning it is get planned batch batch is you leaving the product is whether it is a 10 pieces 100 pieces it is it is not a continuous it is an intermittent in in interrupted is a type of skill labor so batch production and job production those pieces are very unique those pieces are very unique so what the type of skills that we get used also those are highly advanced labor so what is the skill of labor what is the quality of the supervision so what is the quality of it next what is the plant layout how you are utilizing the plant layout next material handling we yeah, i already explained what is meant by material handling in elements of a production planning control system next flexibility in a production schedule so this explains about the uh, characteristics of a batch production system yes So the examples of the job uh, shop production system is exam on the example of tailor shop, vehicle to repair shop, and any other small workshop, the very very small workshop. So uh, and the batch production system is example is truck, paint, cloth, forging machines, sheet metal structures. So these are the different uh, examples. The paint which we are going to paint, the clothes, the clothes we are uh, won't be the same design more and more. So forging machines, sheet metal process. Okay, next. Next comes to the continuous production system. So the continuous production system, it is a continuous or almost continuous physical flow. It is a continuous, almost a continuous physical flow of material. So this production system uses a special type of machine. So it produces standardized components in large quantity. So these are produced a standardized components in large quantity. so here the continuous production system it is having two types one is the mass production system the second is slow production system so what is a mass production system by the name of the mass it is a bulky bulky product so when a different parts or assemblies are manufactured with the help of a continuous process then it is known as a mass production when different parts or assemblies are manufactured with the help of a continuous process it is known as a mass production so in this type of production machines are organized in the form of a line or a product layer so you already know what are different types of layers line layer product layer plant layer so these are different some of the layers which you learned in the iem subject so in this type of production machines are organized in a as per the product so what is the procedure of your product depends on the procedure of the product only the layer was planned Next, and it is involves a very large volume of production. Yes, the mass production it involves very large mass production, and it includes both product and a process standardization. It includes both product and a process standardization. And the similar path is followed by all the output. A similar path is followed by all the output. So, what are the examples? Are components of the industrial product. So, the components of the industrial product explains about the mass production. Next, what are the characteristics of the mass production system? So, what the main characteristic is, it is carried over a large volume. It is a large volume. Next, the cycle time is very less. The special purpose machines are used, and you are going to be getting a high output rate, and the process inventory is less, and the production line is perfectly balanced because we are going to be using a both a product layout and as well as a line layout. Okay. the material handling is carried out automatically the material handling is carried out automatically next what is the flow production system so flow production system it is the one which is explained under the petrol and diesel or a fuel part regarding to the petrol chemical chemical and automobile plant it explains the flow production system so it is a continuous physical flow of material it is a continuous physical flow of material So it is used when the product has passed the consumption rate and has continuous demand. When it is having continuous demand and production rate, it is to be got forward. So the characteristics of a flow production system are: the product passes through the same process. The handling of material is done automatically in the flow production system. So 
the layout of the plant is designed to the basis of the production requirement. This is the production requirement. <coughs> so this, it is nothing but So this explains about the what is the classification of production. Next. So what is an organization of PPC? Internal organization of department. So the last topic in your first unit is what is the organization of a PPC? What is the internal organization of a department? So you can see here is a different types. One is the plant manager manufacturing. Under the plant manager manufacturing, in the flow chart, it is, you can see here four different parts. One is the factory production, the second is the process engineering, the third is the PPC, and the fourth is the plant control. So under the PPC, you come across the fuel control, order preparation, material control, dispatching, scheduling and control, and estimating and the So before going in the deep of the organization of the PPC, so what is the main organization expect? Okay, so organization by the name, we can understand that who is to be get organized. So who are going to be taking the control over a certain company, over a certain company. So who is the, who is the person or who is some who is it? So it is talking about a plant manager manufacturing. It is a plant manager manufacturing. So we are having a different part. One is the factory production, process engineering, PPC and a plant manager. So factory production. So the plant manager manufacturing is it is a management who is going to be uh, who had put a more investment on a company corporator who had put a more investment on a company so he is nothing but a corporator so he come across of three four different units one is the factory production so what is the factory production was there from different different units next what is the process engineering so we get follow over next what is the PPC and what is the plant maintenance. So plant maintenance, you know already how we are going, how the servicing of the machines have to be get done at each and every minute. So if the machine was break down, how it is to be get rectified by doing some servicing. So this all comes under the uh, the different four units under the plant maintenance manufacturing. So in this all, the PPC is the first main. Right, three. The third one is the main part. So get the success of the three, the third one, this is the main part. So that is nothing but a PPC. Okay, so under PPC, you are getting a team control, order preparation, material control, dispatching, scheduling and control, estimating and a tool. So what is the tool control? So what is the tool control? So I already told you what is tool control. Tool control explains that how it is to be uh, providing the tools for different types of uh, units. How we are going to providing the tools for different types of units, for different type of uh, manufacturing the equipment, how it is to be provided. So whether the tools are to be so available in a company is plenty, or it is a insufficient part. So how what how we are going to take care of your tools? How we are going to take care of your tools? So the totally comes under the tool control part. And the tool control divides under the two types. One is the design and procurement of a new tool, and the design and a economy of a different structure, and the control storage and the maintenance of the tools after procurement. Okay, so the first one is under the tool control, the design and procurement of a new tool. So it explains that, okay, we have designed some um, uh, product, we have designed some product. So for that type of product, we didn't have a certain type of a tool. We didn't have a certain type of a tool in your company. So you must pick a design of some tool. So what is the design design of a certain tool? What is the resources are there in your company to design a tool? So what is the new procedure you are following? Whether the tool was used multiply or for a single part. So the first point is what is the design and the procurement of a new tool? The second point is, what is the design and economy of this and fixture? So you know what is meant by this and fixture. One is to be sold, the other is to be get moved, yes or not? So the design and economy of the this and fixture explains that how is, how the tool is to be get folded and how it is to be get moved. The workpiece are to be moved or else the tools are to be get moved. 
so what is the investment you want to put it over the tool over the tool next so what is the control storage and maintenance of the tool so what is the storage if you have designed a very efficient tool by using a certain material which is very costly which is very very costly so how is this to get stored how is how it is to get stored and what is the maintenance of those tools you can't leave the tool that tool in the in the environment so uh, if you have leave the tool in the environment it can be get attacked any number of uh, uh, it can be get decrease the properties also so what is the maintenance was given for a certain tool? so this totally explains about what is the tool what is the tool next what is an order preparation what is an order preparation so order preparation is it involves the conversion of a sales order to the work order it involves the conversion of a sales order to a work order and conversion of a work order into the shop order conversion of a work order into shop order so one is the conversion of a sales order see uh, we had kept some advertising people in the market and we have put more advertisement in the market and we are very nearer to the customer so you got a plenty uh, number of uh, uh, orders regarding a certain product so that is nothing but a sales order that is nothing but a sales order or else if uh, see if any car which is uh, not available in the market but it was very very good in the market it is very efficient so that a perfect family can be used but it is at the present time the so and so car is not available in the market so what the customers ask the company why can't you start the production of the car again okay. because it is very good in the market so though you had having the 10 lakh to 20 lakh per car it is very good in the market so that you are going to be getting with the 6 lakh or a 7 lakh or a 5 lakh so why can't you start the reproduction so this totally comes under the same sort of same sort of so how you are going to be converting the same sort of to the work order so you got the sale order okay but how it is to be get implemented to the work order so we okay that is nothing but a conversion of the sale order to the work order the second one is how the work order is converted to the shop order how it is to be converted to shop order work order is we can be okay as per this procedure as per these units we can be start but we have to be think we have to be check whether those materials are available in your shop floor or not those materials are available in the shop floor or not those equipments are available in the shop floor or not so you have to be check whether the shop floor is fully fledged used for a certain type of sale order sale order so that is nothing but the conversion of a work order to the sale order okay and what is the preparation of an your auxiliary order what is the preparation of your the complete order so how it is to be get prepared okay so after taking this all how we are going to be releasing the product in the market how we are releasing the product in the market so this totally comes under the order preparation order preparation so order preparation explains that one is what is the sales order what is the work order what is your shop order okay sales order means with the help of an advertisement or with the customer uh, personal needed part so it is not about the sale order so how it is to be converted into the work order so after planning something was done but how it is to be get converted into the shop order shop order shop floor you have to check whether the equipment those machines those tools are available in the present our company or not so you have to check everything so that is nothing but a shop order so after checking everything what is the process whether the previous flow charts are there in the company or it is vanished what happened so you have to check what the preparation of your the accurate order is right so this total explains about the order preparation so that a certain number of products can be get into the market next the so tool control is over order preparation is over next material control so material control it explains that the inventory control it is the inventory control which involves the determination of the material requirement which involves the determination of the material requirement so the availability of the raw material the standard finished part and the semi finished goods is essential whenever required okay is essential whenever required so this is to ensure that the production operation starts on time okay 
so what is the inventory control inventory control is you are going to be control over your material so the way whether the materials are available in your company or not so uh, in those materials so whether the standards need to pass so we already know that the batch production uh, sorry the mass production is used only for uh, some type of pieces we don't uh, take the time for a standard piece we have to check whether it is to be get by or it is to be get manufactured in our company so the the time cannot be get delay to manufacture the actual product okay so what is the standard finished part or what is the semi finished product so how what are these essential whenever required or not it totally comes under the material and 